Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm Roz B. Ask Roz B. Thank you for coming back to Building Wealth Together, Back to the Basics. Ooh, we y'all. Guess what it is? It is Women's History Month. We are celebrating women uh, in the past, present, and women that are coming behind us in the future. So today we have a phenomenal guest with us. Actually, she's not a guest. She's really like fam, but we call her a guest <laughs> because this is the first time y'all have seen her on this show, Miss Ronnie Benjamin Talley. Oh, she is super amazing. She's anointed. She's appointed for such a time as this. She's going to bless you. So you need to go call, text, share this video, get everybody you know on this video right now. I know when you come back after you know, cooking breakfast, lunch, washing, whatever you're doing today, you're going to replay and you're going to be blessed. But again, I'm Roz B, as Roz B, Roslyn Booker, Principal Broker, CEO of R. Brook Realty, your host today, along with a few other fabulous friends and co-hosts of this show. And uh, we're just going to get right into it. I'm going to do the introductions, but what is this all about? We said that we would commit to being here every first, second, third, and fourth Saturday to equip you, to inspire, to empower in the financial realm, credit, real estate, insurance, mortgage, gotta have some cha-ching, gotta have some money. And beyond that, holistically, we want to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. And we know we don't have all the answers and we can't do it all, say it all, think of it all. So we bring people like Ronnie to the stage so that she can empower, she can equip, and she can set the course for you to lay hold of your best self so that you can charge full force ahead. But I wanna go around the room and let's introduce our team. Miss Melly Mel, Melanie Michelle, baby doll, Eminem. <laughs> Say, say something. Ros B, <laughs> I love my Ros B. Thank you, Ros. Hey, yes, Melanie Williamson. Uh, I am coming from that community of credit. And I, I love collaborating community with character. And so those are my three C's for my business. And I am working with a companies and specifically a credit restoration company that is attorney-based. That attorney-based company helps people all over the United States, not just in Texas. So we're able to help people get back on their footing by giving them a free assessment and sharing what those tools are needed to rebuild their credit, restore their credit. Maybe it's just a few things that they need to tweak, but they don't know till they don't know. So getting those credit uh, assessments are key and looking at your credit report. So I'm glad to be here. I'm so happy for uh, Ronnie and look forward to hearing all about her journey. And now I'm gonna give it back to Ross so she can introduce the line. <laughs> I hear a lion that's gonna give you some money. You gotta fill out your application. No, oh, I just did that. Oh, okay. Uh, come on, me. <laughs> Rum roll. In okay. other words, you need to know the long lion is. Let me well, tell you why. Come on. Go ahead, long lion. Yes, hi. I am Rhonda Hutchison. I am the loan lioness. I am a residential mortgage lender. I'm with Paramount Residential Mortgage Group. And excited, excited to be here again today with our special guest, Miss Ronnie. Yeah, I, I, like like uh, everyone says, and we love this. We love our team, and we love them what we're bringing uh, to our audience on today. And today is just going to be more an exceptional day of what the audience have in store. So, Miss Ronnie, we are looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to that and what you have to share. That's awesome. And y'all know we're minus one today. The principal, y'all, yeah. oh, we miss him. Where you at, Chris? I know. I know. Come we, on. We, we are giving him a break today. He wants to do some things with his uh, family, and we just wish him well. We send him on. But it's not the same without you, Chris. <laughs> yes. Anyway, Chris Ziegler with the Ziegler Allstate okay. Agency, where Rhonda, what? You you say the tagline? He yeah, he provides customer service with a per personal touch. 
person yes. I touch. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah. And hey, well, let's be honest. We, we, Chris, we just, like Beyonce says, the girls rule the world. Let's just be honest <laughs> with you. He, he was intimidated on today. He said, you know what? I'm not even going to mess with them today. Let's just be real. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go over to Facebook so and ask, let's, let's go to Facebook and ask Miss Roz, his mom, because oh, she's Oh, no, no. Hi, Miss Roz. Hi, Miss Roz. You, you tell us the truth. What, what's Chris <laughs> really doing today? You know him better than anybody. So, yeah. He's playing hooky. And he's the principal. <laughs> Person, but playing hooky. <laughs> hey y'all but you know what we're gonna go ahead we don't do anything without um going before the lord in prayer miss um Melly mel would you lead us in prayer i will most gracious and heavenly father we just come thanking you for just another day of life we thank you for the provision that you've given each of us father we ask you for blessings of our households, Father, for complete healing. Father, give us all the tools that we need. Give us the strength that we need. Father, we know that you are there and you are our protector. You are our everything. You are our all in all. And we just come to you today, Father, just, just being in gratitude, just thanking you for the breath of life that we have on today. We thank you for the guests on today. We ask you to bless her household. Father, we ask you to bless her business and her life overall. Father, as she shares her journey, Father, we ask you to reach people all over this nation, Father, wherever this this recording will reach, Father, of those who might need to hear the nuggets of wisdom, Father, that will be shared on today. Father, we just ask you for provision and for prosperity and for protection over all of our lives. And we ask all these blessings in your precious son, Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So what is it all about? Again, here at Building Wealth Together, you know, we are professionals, but you know what, before we provide an expertise and a tool to you, we are sisters. We are daughters of the King of the Most High God. How he made us is simply amazing. You know, (laughs) we're best friends with Jesus. I mean, he calls us so many things that we have such an expectation to live up to. Did y'all hear me say live up to? Live up to. Oh, my God. And us women here today, we just want to just say we celebrate. We celebrate you. We celebrate Ronnie. We lift each other up in the spirit of just awesomeness and honor and love. Um, Because... If you listen to the music today in, in some of our genres, nobody's respecting the woman. Nobody, no. Nobody's respecting the woman. You know, we could talk about, you know, it's not equal pay for us in, in the C-suite place. Um, there's so many areas where it's it's like this. And I know we feel like we have to constantly fight and fight. So on this Women's History Day, um, the Lord gave me a theme, Rags to Riches. And it, it's funny because I had Ronnie here, but I reached out to one of our sisters where we share uh, relationships, friendships. And she's like, Roz, what about Ronnie Benjamin? I said, yes. <laughs> I mean, she just, just brought her all the way up here. And I'm like, yes, we got to get Ronnie on the set because she does have a testimony. She has a story. She has an amazing journey uh, from rags to riches. Now, we want her to have a floor to tell as much or as little uh, as she wants, but to be guided under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I know this is gonna be one of the best shows ever because she's real people. When I say she's real people, she's real people with a real story. And this is a woman with a heart. Um, that whenever she opens her mouth, it transcends from a place uh, beyond her. And you can tell she's been with God and you can tell that God has raised her up. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Ronnie, the mother, Ronnie, a friend, Ronnie, a sister, Ronnie, a new wife, (laughs) Ronnie, the financial uh, inspiration, Ronnie, the brainiac, Ronnie, I mean, it goes on and on. Ronnie, the actress. Ronnie, the voiceover artist. Ronnie, 
my friend. Girl, take it away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you know what's so funny? First of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for allowing me to be here with you today. I mean, you all are doing some great things in the community. I'm just so honored, honored, honored to be here with you, especially celebrating Women's History Month, right? I mean, let's go, women. Let's go, women power. <laughs> Come on, just over what? A hundred years ago, we couldn't even vote in state. Right, right. Come on now. Right, we had no voice in political affairs. And here we are today, our very first female vice president of this here yeah. United States of America. Yeah. Yeah, you know, no matter no matter what your political position is or what your point of view is on activism, surely you can appreciate the progress. Yeah, yeah. So again, I'm honored to be here with you all. And so yes, I am currently a financial services professional here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I have a heart of serving, especially people of color, but all people. I know that the people of color are the most underserved group in this particular topic of the world of finances. And uh, I refuse to be a part of that problem. I made a personal commitment to be a part of the solution. And so I help 100 families every single year build a solid financial house, starting with budgeting, starting mm -hmm. with wills, starting with life insurance, and then we can work on building that financial house, mm -hmm. investments, accumulating the wealth, making sure that our college plan is in order, our retirement plan is in order, plans to buy a home. Come on, Rhonda and Melanie. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. A home, come yes. on. Come on, Roz. Y'all know it takes a plan to buy a home. You can't just jump into that home and say, I go, right. Yes, yes, absolutely. And it, and it's a 75 to 100 process step. You need a great team. Actually, you need everybody, everybody. right here. Yeah. Yes, we talked about that toolbox last uh, few weeks ago. We talked about everybody, you know, coming together with their toolbox and having resources in place so they can have a plan, create a plan. Because when we know, we, when we don't know, we get to know. We, we bring people together that do know better. And that's what we're doing on this show. We're bringing people together that actually can uh, share extensive information about details that would help move people forward in their lives and their finances. So yes, there Ronnie, amen. Yes, right. I knew that would hit home. I knew <laughs> it. <laughs> then when we don't have all the answers, we bring on special guests like yourself, Ronnie. So amen. we don't pretend to know everything, but we know how to find it. Come exactly. Right. We, we, we may not have all the answers, but God give us wisdom to go find. So yeah. with that being said, Ronnie, where did it start in New York with you? Oh, yeah. So, so I was raised in New York City, Astoria Projects in New York City, Queens, by a single mother, right? Mm -hmm. Mom and dad split back when I was just a young toddler. And uh, they just couldn't figure out a way to make it work. It happens, right? That, that mm -hmm. sounds like yeah. a... Yeah, it's not an uncommon situation nowadays. And so my mother, she did her best. My mom worked hard. I mean, sometimes two jobs to make sure that we had shelter, food, clothes, love. You know, I never felt unloved in my home at all. I felt safe with my mother uh, being around. I knew that, you know, my mom would make sure that, that Ronnie was taken care of. And so I had an older brother and you heard that had my brother was three years older than me when he was murdered right there in the streets of, of our neighborhood. So could you imagine the PTSD involved of going past this, the place where your brother was murdered day in and day out, right? People don't think about PTSD in, 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 in the inner city as well, yeah. you know, where crime is, is an everything, everyday thing. And so, but, but the good thing is being born and raised in New York City. I was surrounded by my friends uh, who just love me to this day, 30 years later, I have best friends that, that still love on me today, right? Uh, and, awesome. and it doesn't matter how much time went away, it doesn't matter where they live, they still love on me today. And so that's great. And then, you know, there was, there's, there was some turmoil as well. You can imagine the, the struggles being raised in a single parent household. Yeah. Where are you when your mom, your single parent is out working? Where are you, right? A lot of yeah. times you're left in the care of others. Yeah. So you I can imagine it. what happens when yeah. people take advantage of that, right? So yeah. at age six was where I faced my very first uh, violent attack sexually. And then again at age eight, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so mm-hmm. what do you do? No counseling at that time. Right. We, we didn't have a life coach. Right. We, what do you do? What do you do with that information? What do you do with that pain, that sorrow, mm-hmm. that, that those questions that you have about, you know, why did this happen to me? And, you know, why did they choose me? And you don't even know who God is really at age six and age eight. Right. So, you know, what do you do? You go on with life as if nothing is wrong, right? This, this, yeah, you, you, you suppress and you bury those things. Come on. That's exactly yeah. what happened. That's exactly what happened. So as I continued to grow up into my young teenage years, my young adult years, unresolving those issues and trauma um, from the past, we know what happens. We know what happens when you go through life with unresolved issues. Right. At least expect it. What happened? Those remnants pop up. Yeah. They pop up in promis- promiscuity, failed marriages, codependency in relationships, self-limited yeah. beliefs. Come on, somebody. I hear I'm you. Gonna, look, look, I'm going to pass the plate. Right. Look, yeah, look, look, don't, don't do it. Don't, look, don't, don't, don't get us started. We're going to collect the offering right here, right now. Look. <laughs> look. Don't do it. Go. You. I am yeah. um, warm with the fact that on this Women's History Month, that women are tuning in and their ears are perking up to experiences in their past. And, and right now, on the edge of your seat to listen mm-hmm. and hear. We're talking about rags to riches. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Come on, I mean, now. keep going because I'm telling you, with the listeners and the following that we have, and even for us, it is enriching, enriches our lives to actually stir and move and come up with healing and transformation, which is so needed right now. Mm-hmm. So this was uh, God's design and we're so it blessed was. to have you on the show. It was. So, yes. And I'm going to tell, you, on, tell you, Ronnie, today it is representative of the women who are crying in silence, mm-hmm. whose voice has been muted who is suffering in silence and, you know, in great pain right now. They don't know how to release. So today, sister, here is your key. Here's your key. But keep going, Ronnie, because we stuff those pain um, circumstances in our hearts, in our life. We are stuffers and we don't know how to process that pain sometimes. And then we come into failure after failure after failure. And then we begin to look at ourselves like, what's wrong with me? You know, what is wrong with me? So what were some turning points for you? When did things start to turn around for you? Yeah, you know, so it's interesting how a lot of times you'll fight for, you'll fight harder for someone else and you'll fight for yourself. I don't know if I'm alone in that. No, you're not. No, you're not. But, uh, the you're last not. marriage, the last marriage that I was in, uh, you know, he disrespected my mom in such a way. Now, remember, I told you guys, my single mom, she was my first protector. She mm-hmm. was my first best friend. She was my first cheerleader. Mm-hmm. She was that one that kept me safe. And so when you disrespect that person, right. yeah. could you imagine how you're looking at me, you know? And so for some reason, that was a turning point for me. I, I walked away from that relationship and I spent four years by myself, y'all. Now, in that four-year period, I did the work. The first thing I did was I looked in the mirror and I made a decision that I wanted to change. I wanted to change the decisions that I was making. I wanted to change the way that I was living my life. I wanted, I wanted to become a better mother. I wanted to become a kinder daughter. I wanted to, I, listen, I still had aspirations of being someone's wife, but I knew that I couldn't go into another relationship broken. There was right. no way I could do that. I had to restore and repair what was going on internally, right? And so the first thing I did is I reached out for help, y'all. Mm-hmm. Surely I couldn't do it by myself. <laughs> I was yeah. messing up at every turn. What did that look like though? Yeah, I, I reached out for, for a, a counselor. Okay. I reached out for life coaches, but don't underestimate a life coach. Mm-hmm. Woo! And a lot of times they're not covered under insurance, but boy, oh boy, was that worth the investment. Mm-hmm. I had, uh, you know, two life, life coaches actually. And what they did was, you know, they 
I found two that were authentic, unapologetic, and they literally saw the version of me that I intended to become. I, I call them to this day, my love mirrors, and I hope that they're listening today um, because those love mirrors will, will remind you of who you really are, not who you are in that current state, but who you really are and the purpose that that's designed for your future. And so I encourage everyone to get someone in your life that you can talk to about anything, right? Yeah. Anything. Yeah. And not just someone who's going to just agree with you all the time. Right. Yeah. Someone who's going to challenge you to become better and, and get out of your comfort zone and stop feeling sorry for yourself and, and really heal past the trauma from your past so that way you can break through and discover you. And I mean, the real you, the real you. And, and I, to be honest with you, that real you is busting at the seams to come out and live full out. And that yeah. idea, you know, that idea uh, you have can really cause you to become the first billionaire in your family. Uh, the, the story that you've been wanting to write may literally be New York's bestseller or award-winning award film or production. Your passion to teach others about the foundations of building financial houses may transfer four, right. five, 10 generations deep. Right. Right? And so I knew I had a larger purpose in my life and uh, there was no way that I can, you know, you know, deal with that on my own. And so that's the first thing that I did. I, I found individuals that I can surround myself with who can love on me and help me heal past that. And then there was daily actionable steps that I had to take y'all. Affirmations. I had posted notes all over my mirror. Yeah. <laughs> reminding me of who I am. And, and, and that way, cause you know, the mind will play tricks on you. And it'll keep reminding you of, you ain't nobody. You know, remember that situation that happened 10 years ago? Remember what happened 20 years ago? You don't, you don't, God don't have no purpose for you, you know? Or what would happen if the real truth got out? All these freaking lies that keep playing over in your mind or whatnot. And if you don't have individuals around you reminding you of who you really are or having your affirmation posters reminding you of who you really are, you can literally fall victim to your own thoughts. You are so right, because the negative self-talk destroys us from the inside out. And we can be as gifted, talented, and have money, but can't seem to move past a certain place in our lives. Or we get so far and then we self-sabotage. Yeah. Because yeah. why? We have not allowed that little girl to be heard. We haven't allowed that little girl who was busted and broken and um, manipulated, um, hurt very badly. We haven't allowed her to heal. So you, right. you're right. Um, we have to run into the, that healing. And if you're like me, Ronnie, um, it didn't come with just one encounter, mm -hmm. meaning one positive encounter, one affirmation. I mean, we, have to get up every day daily yeah daily actually. and love her embrace her and tell her who she is and who she is uh, but your story your testimony is absolutely amazing you've written i think four bestsellers talk to us about those and what who would have thought right <laughs> and so again my love mirrors were the ones who encouraged me to write because I have always written in my journals. You know how your, your parents give you that first diary. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I took that diary to a whole new level and I, I would always write about what happened in the day and you know things that made me laugh, things that made me angry, mm -hmm. things that made me smile, things that made me sad. I would talk about it in my journals. And my Ronnie, and it, do you mean to say that journals writing in journals become books Ooh. that's what uh, happened in my case uh, that's what happened in my case it's so interesting because again i was talking to a life coach and and she said you know ronnie uh what, she gave me two exercises the first exercise was ronnie i want you to sit down and i want everyone to practice this uh, because this was life changing for me, sit down for about 10 to 15 minutes. And I want you to write out all of the things uh, that you are most proud of yourself for. 
write out all of oh, your accomplishments, wow. right? All of your accomplishments and not just this year, like go back, go back to when you were a young girl, go back to when you were a young teenager and you won that track meet, go yeah. back to when you won that talent show and, and celebrate yourself for a moment. She said, write it down, celebrate yourself. And I'll be honest okay. with you guys. Boom. You know, only know wait, you wait, you said something important. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate. Yeah. How easy, yeah. how easy or hard is that for us? Oh my gosh, you know, I can answer that question right now. Yeah. Check this out, ladies. That one ex uh, um, practice, that one exercise she gave me, it was supposed to take 10 to 15 minutes. Do you know I ran from that thing for two weeks because God. I could not figure out one thing oh. right on that list that I was proud of. You see how the mind will play tricks yeah. on you? Right. It, it'll make you focus on the negative and focus on that you, you because because, you know, you can't even see the forest for the trees. It's, it's just clouded with the darkness and the hardships and the pain that is just encapsulates you. And when you can see that what you can separate like that, I love that. Celebrate your accomplishments mm -hmm. and separate. Actually put it on paper. I love journaling, too. So, yes, put it on paper. I mean, yeah. Yes. And also you think about it, you think about it. How, how often do we diminish those things that are great? We celebrate everybody else. Oh, that was awesome that what you did. But when it comes to self, all oh, that wasn't that great. That's mm -hmm. because, because, you know, we were raised to not, you know, lift, uh, you know, you, you, you know, she, she's fast. She's smelling herself. She thinks she's <laughs> this or that. If you've ever come up around a society that is like, oh, you think you, you know, oh, you think you, okay. well, yeah, you know, right. and, and so you start well, as women, we start to actually kind of hunker down and belittle, you know, we, we feel belittled and, and do we, right. uh, does our value diminish mm -hmm. because we're trying to fit in or we're trying to you know, uh, not be this bold, emboldened individual that someone says, hey, angry black woman, or, you know, we, we've come up against a lot of things that we find out that a we lot. won't celebrate because we've got to keep it on the, you know, keep it down so that other people will feel okay. So we fall into that trap as well. Right, exactly. So true, so true. It took me two weeks to do that 15 minute exercise, y'all. And then I finally, I sat down one night because I bumped into my life coach. <laughs> you know how that's why you need those accountability partners. <laughs> oh, what are you yeah. doing with your, with your project? And I'm like, I, I, I haven't done it. I, I haven't done it. And, and, and it's as if she knew my heart. And she said, Ronnie, I need you to do it. Matter of fact, forget whatever plans you had tonight. I need this done. Okay. And okay. when you have someone who holds you accountable to that length, it's like, all right, I, I made a commitment. I have to get this done. And so yeah. I, I took my glass of wine because it, it did require some wine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? I, I want to submit to all of us and every woman that will hear this, that when the voice is in our head, the naysayers on yeah. the outside say to you, you think you all that. Mm. Wow. I want you to say this. I didn't say I was better than you. These are these people. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you sometimes some of the worst critics are the ones that are closest to us. Oh, absolutely. But when God is taking us from one place to the next, they say, you think you all that now. You got a new zip code or you think you got this job or you went and got this degree or you wrote this book and you don't forget where you came from. Say, I don't think I'm better than you, but I was better than where I was because I know who God made me yeah. and I know what he has. So that takes the pressure off of, hey, I rose beyond you. No, I didn't think I was better than you. I, I, I took full responsibility. Like you said, you did, Ronnie. You took full responsibility and you rose. Your accountability partners, your life coaches help you to rise to your own potential, right? To my own potential. And even that's what it's it, about. Yeah, even if it took two weeks. Hey, come on, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did it. And it's so funny because once I started to write down the, the and my number one was I was a great mom. That that's a that's a huge accomplishment. You know, it took me two weeks to just to write that down. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. But again, the mind will play crazy tricks on you. And then after a while, I watched that list grow longer and longer and longer. And then Rosalind, I took that time to celebrate myself. And it felt so good, y'all. And it felt so good that I challenged myself now. And this was three years ago. I challenged myself now to do this every single year. And I do it every three months, to be honest with you, because sometimes I forget every three months that I've done something great three months ago. And so I encourage everyone to take uh, some time out to do that. And so how I got to writing books, right? One of the next exercises that I received was, Ronnie, I want you to write a list of all of the things that you've always wanted to do that you put aside for whatever reason. Mm. Whether it was life that came up, whether it was children, whether it was your own self-limiting beliefs, I want you to write it down. And then I want you to take a moment and do some self-reflection. See, this was all self-work through that process over the last, you know, four to five years when I was just in my absolute singleness. Take self-reflection and say, hey, what still speaks to you? And at the top of the list was writing books. Mm. At the second part was acting and expressing myself creatively, Mm. right? The third was starting my own business. And so it's so interesting now when you fast forward five years later, I'm a published author. I have acted in several projects, stage plays, right? Movies. And 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 now I'm writing films. Like, so it's just so interesting how when you take charge of your life, when you look in the mirror and you truly make a sound decision that you want to become the woman that you were called to be, and then you're also willing to go through the pain, go through the hurt, that part, and that go part. through the fixer up. So you can be that, <laughs> that because you guys well know there's no way that in your current state you can go into the future that you have that's destined for you without making some adjustments. You know oh that. God. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, the same things that got us here is not going to take us to the next level. And so I was prepared to go through the work. That's that's leveling up. And that's 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 so deep and, and rich and, and it, it is intentional. And, you know, the steps you you placed people around you and, and you did the homework. You listened to the direction. You know, you listen to your mentors. And you were open for it. So sometimes we're not open for it because we we can't see, again, the forest for the trees. We don't know what we don't know. And we we block ourselves because of out of fear or protecting ourselves that we box ourselves in. So we're, we're so protective that we box ourselves in. So to open those doors of opportunity that you did, just your story of from rags to riches, from hardship, pain as a, a baby, mm. but going through what you've gone through, and all those transformations, you know, your story is a lot of people's stories and they can identify with that. So your progression that you're sharing with us and the toolbox and the people that you put around you, that's a plan of action. Those are rich, meaty action steps that someone can actually grab hold to and actually start writing their list to celebrate themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they can start reaching out to those mentors and locking arms with people. So I absolutely love that. Now, you you talked about a mission statement. I know that you mentioned I, I uh, that you saw a pastor, and I, I think of the name, and I think it was Eric Wooten, Pastor Eric Wooten at One Community, uh, did share something about mission statement. Tell me what your thoughts oh, were about that. Man, so so I'm, I'm glad you told me his name because I didn't even know his name. Do you hear me? Yes. And I went there, was I by my, I was by myself. So it's not like someone took me there. I literally went there on my own. Just, I kept hearing great things about One Community Church. And, um, you know, I went there not even knowing what to expect. I sat down there and he started off the message, the sermon talking about, you know, this is for not just married people. Cause if I was single at the time, it's not just for the single. So, you know, I don't want you to check out when I start saying what I'm gonna say. That's the first thing he said. And I was just like, huh, oh, okay. So he said, listen, how many of you, this is how I kicked it up. How many of you have a, a mission statement or, or a, you know, a vision statement and you know it by heart through your employers? So here I am at the time I was in the benefits HR department of my company. And so I was teaching others mission statements and vision statements. So I raised my hand, ha, me. <laughs> he was like, all right, look at y'all. He said about yeah. almost a hundred percent of the room here raised a hand. He's well, like, 
Well, well Ronnie, it was well, mandatory in, in some organizations and corporations. You better be able to quote it, right? At least have it written down somewhere. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Seriously. And but then he says, this is what did it for me. He said, okay, so how many of you have a mission statement or a vision statement for your own lives? Mm. I was like, oh snap. <laughs> Look, I, I probably have that written down in my notes somewhere. I remember that sermon. <laughs> that hit me because I said, okay, here I am in my singleness. I told you guys, I still wanted to become a wife. I still wanted to be great in business. I still wanted to be a great mother. So that meant that what I had to have a mission. I, have, I had to have a vision. And then I said, okay, I needed to write some non-negotiable values out as well. Ooh. Otherwise, how would Say you know? Say that again. Come, come on. Say that I, again. You need to have a mission, vision, and some non-negotiable values for your own life. Right. Yeah. That way, when someone comes along to become your business partner, or someone comes along to become your life partner, or someone comes along and they want to be your associate and partner, be an affiliate with you in business, you can ask them, hey, what is your mission? What are, what are your non-negotiable values? That way you can see if they align with yours, right? Because if they don't, guess what? You're going to get 10, 20 years down the line and you're going to be somewhere where you had not intended to be. And don't want to be. 40 years. Don't want to be. 40, 40 years in the wilderness. What? <laughs> what? But Ronnie, bookmark day. I want you to pick it up from there. I want to say something. Mm. because at that time that we create those values that mission mm. but choose to still mm. walk in communion with those persons I believe that is what God means unequally yoked Rosalind I'm about to close my cap here on my lens <laughs> No, we, hey, we can have a praise big look right here, right here in your box, in my box. We can do that. Seriously, that's what it's about. So it's we get, to, we get to choose. We get to choose. And I've always said as women, often it ain't that we was blindsided. No. Hey, that. hey, hey, that's hey. Who y'all gonna give me that speaking? In other languages here, our heart just betrayed us. We were too weak to stand up to those values that we created, to say, mm. it is what it is. Your eyes ain't playing tricks on you. But let's finish, Ronnie. Well, that's why it's non-negotiable. What yeah. does non-negotiable mean? Meaning I'm not compromising I'm not, on no. these things. Right. But what do you do when your heart is too weak? No, that is not, no, 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 no. So this is the thing. Then that means your convict, your non-negotiables are not, you're not being honest with yourself, right? She's speaking okay. somebody. She's speaking yeah, because somebody. My yeah. first non-negotiable, this was my first non-negotiable. You have to love Jehovah. You have to love God. Because guess what? If you don't love God, you're not going to know how to love me. me. No, no. You're not going to know how to love me. And that's, a, I've been through too much pain. I've been through too much hurt, too much sorrow Ooh, to compromise Jesus. that area. Remember, I told you, I looked in the mirror and I said, mirror, Ooh. I said, Ronnie, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? And I made up my mind that I'm not going to be that same woman that I was, which meant I, I'm tired of crying at night. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of holding myself because I'm lonely. I'm tired of, of having to, you know, wipe the tears away because I've been hurt from one thing or another. Now I could point the finger at every single failed relationship, right? But y'all know what happens is what? Four others pointing back towards me. Yeah, mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, Ronnie, where have you been compromising? Mm. Where have you been saying, all right, this does mean something to me, but my love for you is a little bit more. No, I'm, I was done with that. So I got really real about my non-negotiable values. It wasn't mm. something I was willing to compromise with. If you did not love God, I respected your decision, but I knew you weren't the one for me because mm -hmm. I knew you weren't going to know how to treat me. You okay, I'm going to be the, I'm gonna be the advocate here, not the devil's advocate. <laughs> I, do, I do love God. Don't yeah. you see? 
So Ronnie, what was your ticker or what was your light bulb when their love didn't match the love that you needed to see? Yeah, so what, So you know how love takes action. Love, 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 love takes action mm -hmm. now. So, so if I, if I see that, and then I want, I, want, I want your audiences to know that we're not just talking about love. We're not just talking about relationships, but it is encompassed, okay? Mm -hmm. So guess what? if I see that you made a promise to me and you didn't fulfill it, mm -hmm. if, if I see that, you know, you, you said that you would get me something at a certain time and you didn't do it and you didn't follow up on it, or if mm -hmm. I see that your lifestyle is one that doesn't necessarily agree with what I believe in, right? And I'm just calling it out there. If I see mm -hmm. that you're a married man or you're a married uh, woman and you are cheating on your spouse, that's an integrity issue for me mm -hmm. and that I can't do business with that, right? Mm -hmm. If I see that you're not being responsible with your own finances, then I'm concerned about how we would do well together in business. I'm just being honest with you guys. Mm -hmm. This was what Ronnie had to do because I had been hurt in those areas in the past. Mm -hmm. You have to define what that looks like for you, right? But love takes action, see? Mm -hmm. And so I paid attention to the behavior, I paid attention to the actions. My, my second non-negotiable was you have to be able to communicate with me and communicate meaning when it's good, bad, when it's ugly. Yeah. <laughs> if you're unable to fulfill a certain promise, let's talk about it, right? If you're unable to uh, you know, respect my first non-negotiable, let's talk about it, right? And so again, I have, I have a total of five non-negotiable values. And uh, again, I, I align it with every single area of my life my love, my business, my family, even my family knows. I have two kids. I have a 21 year old and I have a 13 year old. And so, you know, they know what mommy expect and they know what I expect, you know, them to do for their own lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even at 13. Yes. That, that, More so that is at definitely 13. The, that's right. The shaping and the, the modeling and, and that, that modeling. Uh, because you you too are a life coach, correct? That you're taking what you've learned and you're certified a life coach. How's that experience uh, that you've been sharing about your background oh, influence gosh. your uh, coaching? Yeah, well, because of my own personal story and how my life has transformed as a result of my own work, I have to pour into others in the same manner, right? Mm -hmm. And so because of the work that I do as a financial advisor, I no longer get paid to do a life coaching at all. And so I do that for free, you mm -hmm. know? And that is probably, you know, the best thing that I can do is, is show others what I've done to love myself all over again. It's like this renewing of, of a soul and of a mind and, and it feels really good. My motto is to live full and die empty. And so I'm meeting women who, who, who have dealt with the same trials that I have of domestic violence, of uh, you know, molestation at a young age and self-limiting beliefs. And so I work with those individuals to, to, to change that narrative, right? And, and do the work so that way you can live the full life that we so desire. And, and, and man, there was this one, um, I don't know if it was a video or something I was reading, but it talked about how if the fact that in order to create us, we had to beat out thousands of other sperms, right? <laughs> I want you to think, go follow with me here. And it takes a sperm and an egg. And we built, we beat that millions of other sperms to be created. And so if you think about that, that surely we got a purpose. Surely have, we yeah. are worth fighting for. Absolutely. Right. That's a great analogy. You know, um, it's amazing to be here. Hey, if you're just joining, I see a couple of people have just joined on Facebook. Thank you for coming, being with us here on Building Wealth Together, Back to the Basics. Uh, we're just here holistically, just empowering uh, women this month mm -hmm. in celebration of Women's History Month. Uh, we do wanna honor those that have gone um, before us to pave the way. And for those sisters who are paving the way right now, creating paths for others to follow the next generation. Those people like Ronnie Benjamin Talley who have said yes to be here 
and share her story uh, publicly as well as in her books. Mm -hmm. um, Ronnie, you'll have to share with us a few of those titles and how people can go get those books. Uh, she has transcended from a bag of shards, <laughs> rags to riches. And I, I will declare that in her life and over her life. Uh, she's now a financial expert and she wants to teach families, individuals alike, how to leverage their assets, how to grow their assets. So Ronnie, we want you to share every piece of contact information that you have, and then we'll come back toward the end of the show and have you give that again. But let's talk about where people can get your books. Tell us about the titles and just a little excerpt of what those books mean. Absolutely. And so, uh, and, and, I remember, uh, I think it was Melanie asking about the journal. And uh, one of the things that I, that I want to say too, is there was one particular part, uh, letter that I wrote to my younger self. And Rosalind, you talked about talking to that young girl inside of you, right? And so at some point uh, today, if you don't mind, I'd love to share with you guys that letter, please. that letter that I wrote to my younger oh, self. Please. And, yeah, and we can do that. It yeah. would inspire and encourage another woman out there who's listening. Okay. Uh, yeah. But but I've written so far Breakthrough. That was my very first. And now all of these books are all anthology. So individuals, uh, uh, my contributions to other, uh, uh, with other authors, like oh, 16 mm -hmm. to, you know, ton, hundreds of other authors. And so Breakthrough was my very first one. And all of these can be found on Amazon, but there's Breakthrough. Their soul talk. Come on, come on, y'all. Their hey. soulful <laughs> prayers and then their soulful affirmations. All right. And so you can find them all on Amazon. Uh, you can also reach out to me directly on Facebook. I'm on uh, as Ronnie Benjamin, B E N J A M I N. That will be changing, y'all. Listen, I'm newly married, so I'm taking on my husband's last name now. I so that'll you. be changing. <laughs> but right now it's Ronnie Benjamin. And then on Instagram, it's Ronnie Uplifts. All right. So that's how you can find me. I'd love to connect with you all. If I can be of service to you in any capacity, I would be honored to. All right. Give us, give us those two last um, books that you gave. I have Breakthrough, Soul Talk, and what else? Oh, Soulful Affirmations, mm -hmm. as well as Soulful Prayers. Okay. Yep. Great, great books, guys. You will not be the same after reading them. Transformational. And that's, that's, that's one of my, you know, my missions in, in my mission in life is to, to, to uplift and transform uplift and transform that's 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 what i'm all about and i'm going to do it unapologetically and i'm going to be as authentic as i know how you know wow. for too long I've, I've marched to the beat of other people's drums and so at this point in my life i'm over that i'm over that completely over that i'm living my life out loud and and i'm living full and i'm allowing all of my gifts and all of my talents all of my Come skills on. to be used for god's purpose and so i'm going to do that until i take my last breath that's amazing. I can't wait to hear the letter. Yeah. Oh, I can't it. wait to hear that either. I so hate here's the letter, y'all. Here's the letter. And it's, it's literally entitled A Letter to Her. Oh, wow. Well, we can't wait to hear it. But you know what, Miss Ronnie, you know how we're, we're you know, super women. You know, that, that's just really the title that hmm. we have just been born with, especially African-American women. And, and, you know, and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about just listening to you and not only your author, your actor, your coach, your financial expert, your mother, your wife, how do you balance, you know, and I'm sure there's people that's listening as well, how does she balance that and then nothing goes lacking? Because sometimes that has, you know, that's a, a, a very thing in our lives that, okay, seem like something is goes lacking in that process. And even uh, giving out your free, you know, coaching advice. You know, and that's another, that's another task. And you may not see it as a task, uh, but as it's another action that you, you complete. So how do you balance that all, you know, yeah. and still be effective in your life in the direction that you want to go? Yeah, no, no, no. That, that's, that's really a great question. I used to ask that question all the time to all the individuals that I saw achieving success. And, and I'm just going to share what it is that I've been given. Uh, and that is have a schedule. Block your calendar off yes. from eight to 10. What are you doing from 10 to 12? What are you doing? 
I take a lunch break from 12 to one. So from one to three, what am I doing? From three to five, what am I doing? Right? From seven yeah. to eight, what am I doing? When am, when am I scheduling my family time? When am I scheduling date night with my new hubby? <laughs> when am I scheduling time that I'm dedicating to my business? When am I scheduling time that I'm dedicating to my coaching? When am I scheduling time that I'm dedicating to my writing? It is that real. And knowing when to say, no, I, I don't have this time this month. Maybe right, if right. you had, you know, gotten to me a little bit early, I could plan. Matter of fact, can I serve you next month? Mm -hmm. Right. I'm planning my schedule for next month. How can I make sure that I can serve you next month? Yeah. Uh, so exactly. it's, it's, and it's okay to be selfish. A lot of people say you, she don't say, it and that. no, it's okay to protect your space and your time and your peace. You have to, who else is going to do it? Yeah. Oh my, wow. this is good. Right there. Very good. So, so you're, you're very, very intentional about your day. That's it, Ross. Yeah. Mary, Mary Kay, back in the day, 150 years ago, I started out in um, Mary Kay when I was right out of high school, just using the product. And fast forward, I, they, I started to, couldn't find people to, you know, they use it and I couldn't find a consultant. So I just said, you know, I'm be my own personal use consultant. Well, they gave a calendar and that Mary Kay was the first one that helped me to, to block those calendars. They gave a calendar and it said, block out and spend your time. Spend it all for the month and give yourself these time blocks to make sure everything was covered. So it was exactly what you shared. And I've been using that exactly. same model. Mm -hmm. it, it, works, guys. it works. It Tell works. It works. It works. Tell us about the letter. I want to hear about the letter. Yeah, we don't want to hear about the Yes, the letter. Yeah. The letter. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So here's the letter, y'all. Now, beyond y'all know I, what is it? I'm authentic. I'm unapologetic. So if you see the tears still flowing, that's because this is my story. Okay. So Come on. I got my with, tissue right tissue. here. Yes. So, <laughs> so it's entitled A Letter to Her. A letter to her. And it says here, little girl, I see you hiding. No need to hide anymore. I remember you and I know who you are. Let's take a journey together. Are you ready? No? Oh, I understand. You need me to address what happened in the past first, huh? Well, okay. Let me start by saying you are not to blame. It's not your fault your daddy left. You were only two years old. Daddy and mommy just couldn't get along. Believe me, with their horrible tempers, it was best. They would have killed each other before long. So somebody had to leave. Could you imagine being raised by strangers because your parents were dead or in jail? You see, they merely did what was best for everyone. You're not at fault for a worthless man's behavior. He hurt you and took advantage of your innocence, baby. He violated your body and jeopardized your life. Now I know you're asking yourself several questions. Why didn't I tell someone sooner? Was it because I was ashamed? Did I fear retaliation? Is it because he threatened me and my family? How will I ever trust again? But beautiful girl, you were afraid. You didn't realize what was happening to you. You were only six years old, still a baby. You were still learning about life, your surroundings, the elementary things. There are people in this world who make bad decisions all the time. They don't think about who they hurt with their choices. Your brother didn't realize you would forever be scarred by his actions either. Sweetheart, you were eight years old when he made you touch him down there. I know the truth. I saw it all. But you thought it was better to keep silent to protect him, right? To save him from going back to yet another group home, away from the family. You see, look at your heart. At such a young age, you put the needs of others above your own. Now this is a noble quality, baby but when it's used for those worthy. Now I'm gonna tell you something that I want you to always remember. What's done in the dark will always come to light. And as you grow older, don't protect someone who's causing you harm, baby girl. They'll do it to someone else. Could you imagine another little girl going through what you went through? Would you want her heart and her body to hurt like yours do? I know you wouldn't. I love you so much. I feel your presence every day. Ronnie, you are a good girl with a heart of gold and you will heal from these events. 
You did not do anything to deserve what happened to you. You are stronger than you think and I will protect you for the rest of your life. I will speak for you. I will be so loud that God will hear me from the heavens. I will fight for you so you'll never have to fear any man. I will console you when the nightmares return. I will remind you of the good memories of your youth to make you smile. Do you mm. remember when cousin Michael would throw you up in the air and catch you every time? How about the time you raced mommy down that grassy hill as you both wore that red and white outfit to match? Do you remember the soft hugs and kisses from your grandma after a long train ride on the Metro North? Oh, how those cinnamon raisin bagels from Grand Central Station were the best. You are so special because you're you. The one thing that nobody else has is you, your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So let's build, let's play, let's dance, let's draw, write, and live as only you can. You are not alone and you can trust me always, but we have to finish what we came here to do. Let's write our way out. And that's my letter to her. Oh. Hey, you know. Oh my goodness. Mm. Woo. There are no words. Um, Ronnie. Wow. All I can say is that nations, and as far as our eyes can see, a sea of women, not just women, but even men, have been touched already by this story. Thank mm -hmm. you. Wow. Thank you. Your yes means everything. Honored. Absolutely honored. Absolutely honored to be here with you ladies today. Seriously. Oh, my Thank goodness. Thank you for having me. Oh, gosh. I love the, the transparency that you've shared, you know, and you your heart, like Roz was oh, talking heart. about, your heart. Yeah. She couldn't even put into words. I remember her trying to introduce you and talking <laughs> about your heart. And it, she- Yeah, you see. Yes, now we see. So, you know, when your heart has been hurt and devastated, equals to the rags, and, and we can mm. look at their situation and see it from the outside, from this looking in as you share through your letter and speaking to that child and speaking to our inner child, what is holding us back? What is keeping us stricken with fear? What is causing the self-sabotage? What's causing the pain, the high blood pressure, the medical issues in relationship to stress that keep us in a state where we cannot move forward? Ronnie, you've showed us many different things and positive things that we can do today, today. to actually yeah. start Ooh. moving toward that, moving toward God, moving toward your recovery, your healing, and the key word is your transformation. So instead of Ro Roz's record player playing in the head of all the negative, all the bad, yes. we're overwhelmed with all of that negative stuff. How do we break through and see the light? How do we see the light our way out of that? We got it. That's, that's a routine. And we look at our it past. Is. Maybe it's in our past. You know, we've seen it in our family just going on and on. We need to break the cycle. So breaking the cycle means, you know what? Break that record player. Come on, come on. A new, you know, when you're writing those celebration stories about your life down, that's new records that you can play mm -hmm. in your head yeah. to replace that I, negative information. Oh, so, yes, I say no more, no more yeah. watch parties. You know how people get together sometimes and they pop in their favorite uh, video or, you know, go to their favorite Netflix. Well, no more. Oh, yeah. I hear that. No more watch parties. And anybody that wants to continue coming to watch the past, right. to replay the past, that wants to be a part of the past, they can't. They can't come to the party because we're playing something different. Matter of fact, what you're saying, Ronnie, is you've got the pen. You're writing a different story. I'm writing a different Hallelujah. story. Hallelujah. Come on. You know what? <laughs> Amen. And you know what? And if you can't see it for yourself, look up. She locked yeah. arms with people that saw it for her. Right, she exactly. couldn't see it for herself. So other people saw her 
the way she is, her raw, That's beautiful, right. wonderful self. And mm -hmm. you know what? When you can put a projector on a blank canvas Ooh! and put project, even if you can't see it for yourself, yeah. someone yeah. that's locking arms and Come projecting on. on your vision, Come your on. statement, your life, what you, can, what you can't see for yourself, project it forward with the help of others around you. I Amen. Love it. I'm going to go to Facebook real quick. We got some comments. We got Miss Margaret watching. Cynthia said, powerful letter. Miss mm. uh, Rosalind said, hey, amen. And uh, someone by the name of Blessings, Renee or Renee Blessings. I don't know if that's her Facebook name or her real name. She said, can I call you regarding coaching? I'm just coming mm. out of a depression um, that I didn't realize I was in mm. after finding out my daughter's dad molested her. Uh, so blessings. Uh, we definitely, uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, let's, let's just join uh, together um, and, and pray. Mm. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, we just pray, pray for blessings in her daughter. Uh, we pray, God, that you would touch her in such a special way both of them to heal them from the inside out. Only you, God, can go to the depths of that place, God, to heal the emotional scars, to heal the pain, to heal physically, mentally, emotionally, the scourge that has left a huge scab. And God, as the tears fall, let her know you're bottling every tear. And God, you are, you've died. You sent your son to die to do something about that pain already. It's already done. It's already healed. We declare it. And we just say we partner with her in the spirit. And God, we pray. Um, yeah, we pray that Ronnie will be able to connect her with resources or, or help her. Or us as a sisterhood, God, a kingdom of sisterhood that we can be there for her in any other women that may watch this that have gone through uh, pain herself, who maybe have a story of rags, whose life has been torn to shards, God, and she feels like there's no hope and there's no repair beyond uh, her situation. We say God is able. God is big. He is magnified. He fixed the end in the beginning. He bore our pain. He did something about it. And he is in the business of turning rags to riches. God, you did it for Ronnie. God, you've done it for Melanie. God, you've done it for Rhonda. God, you've done it for me. And you are no respected person. God, we know you will do it for her under the sounding of our voice. We just say, bless your name. It is so. So be it. Amen. 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 So, I don't even want to get off today. <laughs> but we, we look, in? <laughs> look, I hear you. Well, in respect you. of time, though, uh, Ronnie, if you'll one more time as we do our round robin, we're just going to be about three minutes behind. Go ahead and leave your contact information again for anyone that wants to reach you, and then uh, we will close out. Absolutely. Um, building well together. Thank you, ladies, so much for having me today. Um, my name again is Ronnie Benjamin Talley. I help families protect themselves and their family members against death, disability, extended medical situations. I help families prepare for college and retirement. Those are all expensive goals and we can live the life we desire, but it does take a plan. So I hope you put a plan in place to do just those things. I am available through uh, phone, which is 770-685-5532. You can also send me a message privately if that's what you desire through any social media platform you prefer. If Facebook, it's Ronnie Benjamin. If it's on Instagram, IG, it's Ronnie, R-O-N-I, Uplifts, U-P-L-I-F-T-S. I look forward to hearing from everyone uh, at all who, 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 if I said something that resonated with you, if I made an impact on you in anywhere at all, at all I'm open to hearing, uh, to hearing your voice and to hearing your story and, and learning how I can serve you. Amen. Amen. And I'm Roz B. Ask Roz B. Roslyn Booker, Principal Broker, CEO of R. Brook Realty, where we birth dreams and build legacies in real estate. We're leaving no dream behind, helping families, individuals, one home, 
one property at a time. My phone number is 972-679-9311. Again, that's 972-679-9311. Melly Mel? Yes, Melanie Williamson. They call me Melanie Michelle here on this radio. And I'm totally blessed with Ronnie and I appreciate you being here. I, uh, you can reach me for credit education, credit restoration at 469-403-8394. That's 469-403-8394. Help you get your credit report and get that thing reviewed so that you can get on a, a footing that is solid and, and strong. Rhonda? Okay. And Ms. Rhonda, thank you for sharing your heart today. Um, so much appreciated. Uh, my name is Rhonda Hutchison. I am the loan lioness with Paramount Residential Mortgage Group. I am a residential mortgage lender. And I, what I do is I roar with passion and power. Please contact me today at 214-856-3747. That's 214-856-3747. I'll be happy to assist you with any of your lending needs. Roz is on mute. <laughs> Close us out, Ross. Come on. Awesome. And Chris, we miss you. Uh, Chris Ziegler with the Allstate Agency. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't have Chris's number handy. Do y'all? No, anyway. just call us. We'll, get, we'll connect yeah. you to Chris. Just call yes. us. Just call us. We'll do that. Yeah. But that's all we have time for today. And again, blessings, blessings, and honor to you, uh, Ronnie Benjamin Talley. You are amazing. And we love you. Um, we will see everyone next week. High noon, 12 noon, hour of power, building wealth together, back to the basics. Talk to you later. Have an awesome weekend. Bye-bye. All right.